13 minutes and 46 seconds. That's the time an average straight woman needs to reach an orgasm, if she's able to experience one at all. As an entrepreneur and a mom of two young kids, I don't have 13 minutes and 46 seconds. So, frankly, my sex life sucked after having kids. You may be thinking, sure, of course, she's not having the sex of her life. She and her partner have two small kids to take care of. But parent or not, I'm not alone in this. The global survey of sexual behavior found they ask over 26,000 participants across the planet and found that 56% are not very satisfied with their sex life. That's a lot of bad sex. And I'm here to tell you that this could have been avoided. How? The answer is embarrassingly simple. With sex education. And I don't mean this TV series, Sex Education, even though that's definitely worth a binge watch over the weekend. Most of us think of sex ed as that one awkward class in school we had as teenagers that didn't really go beyond the advice on preventing pregnancy and protection against sexually transmitted infections and consent, if we were lucky. But great sex ed should empower all of us, regardless of our sexual orientation, our age, our culture, our religion, our relationship status. It should help us explore what we like and encourage us to talk about it. It should also help us in feeling more confident in our bodies and make us excited to explore them. An important thing that we need to acknowledge is that our sex life is dynamic. It goes through different stages as our environment, our relationship towards ourselves and others, and, yeah, perhaps also our physical health changes throughout our lives. I call this a sexual life cycle. That's why sex education is a lifelong learning process, not a one-off class we finish at school. So let me share with you why each stage in our life cycle is so special and requires a beautiful opportunity to grow. Let's start in the beginning, our childhood. Children's sexual development is shaped by their environment. If parents are openly sharing their affection by, say, kissing or hugging, they are already starting to associate something positive with intimate relationships. I remember how my tummy would tingle seeing my parents cuddle up. So this is the best preparation for what comes later in our life cycles. Now, remember when you were a teenager, that very first moment when you had your first kiss or your first orgasm, Remember those fireworks inside of you, a whole new world to discover, an exciting one, but also scary. You probably had a lot of questions at this point and were looking for answers. Teenagers today turn towards mainstream porn to get their answers. That unfortunately leads very often to unrealistic expectations as well as performance anxiety. Both where pleasure-based sex education could come in and solve a lot of problems here. It, it could, for example, introduce teenagers on how um, to watch porn in a different way. For example, introduce them to ethically produced, more age-appropriate, as well as more realistic porn. Pleasure-based sex ed could also come in and introduce them on information like, for example, how to stimulate a clitoris or how oral sex works. Next, we're entering our 20s. That is when we are peaking with our sexual activity. 
We do it around 112 times per year, or twice per week. Our libido is on fire here. Thanks to the sex-positive social media culture, we are encouraged to explore without judgment. But technology is a double-edged sword here. According to one study found after the pandemic, Gen Zers and Millennials are now feeling more comfortable being intimate online, so through, for example, sexting, video sex, phone sex. The current sex education neither teaches us how to build intimate relationships, nor how to sustain them. But here, especially pleasure-based sex education could come in and introduce us on how to talk about intimate relationships and how to explore our desires safely by setting boundaries. Here we have this beautiful momentum of this very sexually active time to experience so much. As we're entering our 30s, we typically have less sex than before. Some of us are having kids at this point, which reduces both the quantity and quality of sex. This was certainly the case for me. Here we may need some tips on how to dust off our sex toys in a very busy time and how to spice up our long-term relationships. Some of us are still looking for their perfect match. So tips on how to navigate the dating jungle without frustration can be very useful here. Divorces are also very likely in our 30s. So insights on how to overcome a painful relationship and heal can be life-saving. Now, as we're getting older, we might have less sex than before. But studies have found, like wine, sex gets sexually better with age. Vulva owners, for instance, have a higher chance to climax. And we're having less performance anxieties. And at that point, we're feeling more confident in our bodies. We come to terms with our body image. So finally, in our 40s, we're enjoying sex much more. But unfortunately, the chances of developing a health condition that impacts our libido are also increasing. This doesn't mean we need to give up on sex. This only means we need to learn something new and adjust. So, pleasure-based sex ed could show us how to boost our libido and how to stay more fit for the bedroom. As we're entering our 50s, our bodies continue to change. For example, vulva owners or folks experiencing menopause have a higher chance to experience vaginal dryness as well as painful sex. Penis owners, for instance, have a higher chance to experience arousal issues, for example, mm, the standard sexual fantasy is no longer enough, and also erection problems can be huge um, after 40s. At this stage, we have an opportunity to redefine sex from purely the act of penetration to yeah, exploring other sexual experiences like sensual massage or role play, which can be as pleasurable, if not more. If you're 65 or older and are sexually active, you probably have accumulated a lot of sexual knowledge by now and are feeling in general more confident about it. You may be realizing, dang, some of those sex positions that worked until now aren't so easy anymore. But that doesn't mean sex can't be fun. Pleasure-based sex that could come in and show us new sex positions that are more comfortable depending on our needs. And it could show us how to make the best out of this. So, for example, if we may need more assistance, we can think about ordering one of those fancy sex chairs. No matter our age, the more we educate ourselves and work through a bumpy phase, the longer we'll have sex that is also satisfying. 
As you can see, our life cycles are beautiful, messy, ecstatic, painful, and everything in between. Great sex requires lifelong learning, like a muscle that we need to train in order to keep it healthy. We practice lifelong learning in so many other areas of our lives, like advancing our career or learning a new language. So why not applying this mindset also in how to learn satisfying sex? My journey in discovering lifelong sex education has inspired me to found a company that provides online pleasure-based sex education to tens of thousands of adults around the planet. It has given me the chance to learn and work from many of the world-renowned sex experts. So let me share with you my three biggest learnings that help me and many of our community members level up their sex life. First is easy. Prioritize sex. While we all have a busy life, prioritizing your sex life takes nothing more than one decision. And don't just keep saying one day, make that day today. So for example, as a busy mom, instead of scheduling my date nights in the evening with my husband, we now schedule morning dates. Then that's when our kids are in the kindergarten and we're together in our home office. So starting my day like this doesn't only um, make me feel more confident, but also more connected throughout my day. And by the way, you don't need a partner for that. Masturbation gives you the same effect. So I can only urge you to look at your day-to-day -day life and see where you can prioritize sex for yourself. My next learning for you is finding the sex education that's relevant to you. Unfortunately, there's not a one-size-fits-all solution, so we all need to find the education that's relevant to us. But it can be a struggle to find the right format here. You might not want to sign up for a sex workshop that's happening in a shady basement. Do you? Or the thought of joining one-on-one -on -one sex therapy might also not yet quite repealing to you. That's why I love the format of video online courses as a format for sex education. It, it gives us the opportunity to watch in the comfort of our home anonymously. We can watch it in our own speed and time, and uh, professionals guiding us through a step-by-step -step process and we can watch it with our partner, a friend, or just by ourselves. But how do you know what's really relevant to you? Ask yourself, what do I truly desire? Then ask yourself, what turns me off? Knowing what you like and dislike will help you to find the education that's relevant to you. And my last and big learning for you is practice. While watching an online course or reading a book is only half of the learning process, really implementing it and doing the work, this is what will bring the change. So if you want to learn surfing, watching a video tutorial won't be enough. You need to swallow a lot of salt water in order to get good at it. So same with sex education. You need to try in order to learn and try again and again and again, fail a little because that's part of the learning process too, and try again until it works for you. The most important thing I want you to take home is don't settle for mediocre sex. Don't give up on it either. Great sex is trainable wherever you're at on your journey. It can empower us. It can make us feel more confident. 
It can make us kinder and more loving human beings. It can be one of the most beautiful human experiences. And it's one pillar of well-being, so it can be utilized for your own personal growth. And it's one fundamental way how we can connect to ourselves and to other human beings. So let's learn the kind of sex that leaves goosebumps all over our bodies. The kind of sex that makes us feel deeply connected. Thank you. Thank you.